Right, well I'm all set up now for doing the threading. <clears throat> but before I do, there is just something I want to go over. More for anyone who's a bit new to threading on a lathe. Because I do think it can be a little bit confusing. And it's when you're going to thread, I would say properly, when you're going to be putting your cut on your top slide, so you're only taking half the, um, you're only cutting on one half of the thread, which I'm going to do with this one because there's an awful lot of uh, overhang here and not an awful lot of grip. So I'm going to be doing this very slowly. I'm going to be cutting from the back because I think that puts a little bit less pressure and if you do get a snag it tends to come up rather than digging in and getting scrunched up but it's the angle that is your angle of attack when you're um, threading when you're doing a 60 degree or 55 as I'm doing in this case I think it's quite easy to make a mistake with your top slide I mean I know it's easy because I've done it even when I've known what I'm doing I've done it it's it's quite easy to, like if we have a look at my um, I'll just take the camera down and go hand held. So if you have a look at a scowl on my top slide, this is my sort of zero point here. Here actually. Now as you can see it's way off. It's quite easy if you're going to put a 27 and a half degree angle on this. To think that you just go to 27 and a half degrees on here and they'll give you the right angle but it won't because that's giving you the angle on the x axis if you like you need the angle on the y axis so if i sort of come back up here this is a 60 degree thread gauge and i can't do this but your, your top slide needs to be at this angle with the flat surface against your work and it is an easy mistake to make if you haven't been threading or you haven't done any threading for a while or if you're new to it you read or someone tells you you've got to do it at 27 and a half degree angle and you put a 27 and a half degree angle on your top slide and it'll be wrong and I've done it I've even done it when I've known what I'm doing and I've seen better people than me do it as well. It's it's not an hard mistake to make, even though it's a stupid mistake. But I just wanted to go over that quick. All right, so getting back to the job in hand, I'm just gonna touch this off. Set me cross light to zero. Me, uh, I haven't got an adjustable what's the name on me top slide yet and that's at about 21 I'm going to back that out a bit I'll put a tiny little bit of cut on it I'm going to engage the um, lead screw I've got the change wheel set up for a 12 teeth per inch thread hopefully I'm going to get away with this without doing me um, just putting a bit of oil in the what's that? my oil is packed up I have to push it in I'm hoping to get away with this without having the back gear because I am only going to be taking very very slight cuts because like I say there's a lot of overhang here and I don't want to bugger it up at this stage of the game All right, here we go then It's fine and fine. Right, I'm going to wait for a number to come round and engage the lead screw. I can't do that left handed. Oh, 
sunlight and I've just seen a problem. I don't know, that was noticeable on the camera, but the problem was this was going to hit the material before I had enough depth, so I've had to bring the cutter out a bit more, which is going to be, a, <clears throat> it's going to get an awful lot of flex. All right, let's see if we can get a scratch cut in there and check it, make sure it's 12 teeth per inch, and I won't bug it up like I did on the last thing on the uh, ER32 collet chuck I'm trying to make call it block even Pull it out, and get my thread gauge and check it. Oh, well, I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to get the. Um, let me try. Alright, oh, that's a bit better. I don't know if you can see that, but the thread gauge is getting right on them. So we're good to go. Right, I'm about to flip the cutter over and I'm going to have to do it by bringing the top slide away into this. There's just no way it'll cut that way for some reason. It's just flipping the uh, tool over all the time. So I'm going to do it by pulling the top slide back this way to get the cut on. This really is an odd bit of steel. This HSS bit I've got is having trouble cutting this. But persevere with very small cuts and see how it goes. I've re blued it just to see if I can see what's going on in there. doing it but it's struggling
This is most definitely the hardest thread I've ever cut. <clears throat> this, HS, this HSS bit I've got is really struggling with this material, but it's it's nearly there, but it's a bit tapered, and I think that's just flex on the on the bit. So I'm just going to have to make loads of spring cuts until I can get it in. Right, well that, this tester bit, this is that I made ages ago, it's just got the same thread. <clears throat> it's got a much smaller I'm going to have to start making the um, register now. Thing is I don't really want to take it away from the thread, I can pick the thread up again, but I mean it's deep enough, but whether it's got too much taper on it, I don't know. Well, we'll have to see. I'm going to start on the uh, taper now. On taper, got taper on the brain. Right, I'm going to start on the um, register. That's the word I'm looking for. Right, well, I've got my poor man's DRO on. I'm going to go in 0.4 of an inch for the register now. Oh, I'm getting somewhere close now. it round and try it on the on the nose now in there Give her an heavy old lump, I tell you. That 
that is absolutely perfect. Maybe a little bit tight, but better tight than loose. Right, needs to go a little bit further. It's not quite deep enough. Don't really want to interfere with again and that is that right I can get shot at a chuck now him on there that was a very hard fault thread and register 